Coming up on ATV News, students are concerned with the response time during emergencies on campus. We'll hear their reactions. Also, students are advocating for AU to implement the Green New Deal. All this and more coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Stella Yuzhik. And I'm Julianne Sheehan. Here are tonight's top stories. Latinos en Acción, an advocacy and community group at AU, had over $600 worth of items for its end of year celebration stolen from the club storage room, according to their Instagram. The organization said their event, Hasta la Proxima, will still take place this Saturday. The incident, which happened earlier this week, has yet to be resolved. LEA's purpose is to advocate for immigration rights and to support the Latinx community here on campus. If you or someone you know has any information about the theft, please contact Latinos en Acción on Instagram at au underscore lea underscore. After issues with slow response time during a recent incident in McDowell Hall, residents say they are concerned with AU's emergency protocols. I spoke with students to get their opinions on the issue. Safety of students on AU's campus has been put into question after a mix-up sent emergency response units to the wrong location earlier this month. This event has many students evaluating the safety resources available to them on campus. Daniel Weinstein, a McDowell resident, finds the delayed response time troubling. I was unaware that there was like a problem with uh, like the logistics or the like them getting there. Um, that's kind of that's definitely kind of frightening. The majority of students agree that in a time of crisis, they would call 911 before relying on AUPD. Students also admitted to not knowing the AUPD emergency phone numbers off the top of their heads. Junior Amanda Bosses suggests emergency numbers be made more accessible around campus for students to use. If they want us to know their phone number, I think it should be on something around the buildings. Like I know they have stuff maybe in like the bathroom or something or just on the wall into every building. A common resource among students living on campus is their resident assistant. Probably call 911 first, and then I feel like my IRA is usually around, so I would try and not find him or find someone. Uh, you know, there's a guy on my floor also who, you know, is a desk receptionist, so he knows the numbers. The delayed emergency response has added momentum to a recent call for the inclusion of Narcan, an overdose reversing nasal spray, into the residence halls for easy student access. AUPD and residence hall emergency contact information can be found on AU's website. Despite the buzz on campus, not that many students voted in the AU student government elections the first week in April. Participation decreased significantly, significantly since 2022. According to the Eagle, voter participation was down by about 44% compared to last year. Rising senior Edwin Santos became the first Latino student government president. Sophomore Arusa Islam will be the new vice president, while sophomore Julia Camino was elected as secretary. The student body offered its feedback on newly restructured meal plans on campus, which about 40% of students found to be very unfavorable. With elections over and finalized, the new members will begin to prepare for their terms in the upcoming fall semester. ATV News reporter Jane Caroline Fusco recently went to a rally in support of AU adopting the Green New Deal on campus. Jane is with us in the studio today to talk about the rally. Welcome, Jane. Thanks, Julianne. Creating the Green New Deal for AU was not an easy task. From tabling on the quad to hosting events, the team dedicated hours to trying to make AU a safe campus for all. On April 5th, the AU chapter of the Sunrise Movement held a rally on the quad to educate students about its Green New Deal plan, aimed at pressuring the university to adopt more sustainable practices. The National Sunrise Movement is a youth political organization that focuses on addressing the impacts of the climate crisis. But it goes beyond business practices to also address how climate change affects people. What today was about was changing the conversation on what we characterize as the environment at AU, much more than just the pretty trees outside, but how safe, dignified and represented students and workers feel on campus, and how we can embed that into the definition of what it means to be a sustainable campus. Chapter leaders worked for over a year on the AU Green New Deal plan, which demands complete decarbonization, transparency, food justice, environmental justice, and fair compensation for workers. Um, when you hear the Green New Deal, you might not know what that means, but when you hear what the speakers talked about today, the demands they shared, the issues that they see on campus, um, from outright racism to food insecurity to 
the university not meeting the sustainability commitments that they make. The Green New Deal was on the ballot during student government elections this month, and more than 1,100 students voted in favor of the referendum. While Sunrise organizers are happy to see this show of support, they want more students to become actively involved. You know, change doesn't come without demanding it, without activists and people on the outside calling for change. Um, that's never how, you know, things just don't happen because power decides it wants to you know, make things better for the people that don't have it in the past, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Jane, what's next for the Sunrise Movement? Organizers told me that this rally was just the beginning of its campaign, and they will continue to make their demands for a more eco-friendly campus. While there are no upcoming events currently on their calendar, I'm told that more events like this one are in the works. That's great. Also, the student body recently voted on whether AU should support the Green New Deal on campus. What was the outcome of that vote? 83% of voters were in support of implementing it on campus. Thanks, Jane. American University men's basketball recently hired a new coach, Dwayne Simpkins, to lead the team next season. Lindsay Morin has the story. American University's men's basketball is changing. AU hired a new head coach, Dwayne Simpkins, for the upcoming season. After his hire, Simpkins spoke at a press conference in Bender Arena alongside AU President Sylvia Burwell, Director of Athletics and Recreation Dr. Billy Walker, and members from the AU Athletics Board. Simpkins will start coaching in next fall season with hopes that the team will do even better than they did this year. And this season they've done great, but I feel like the change that they're going to face, it's going to make them even better. This past season, the men's team placed sixth in the Patriot League, but Simpkins says he has even higher hopes for how the team will perform next season. Simpkins was joined by his wife and three children at the press conference, where he said they have continued to stick by him and inspire him to become the person he is today. He spoke about how he wants his players to be respectful, tough, and to always have humility. Simpkins told the team that his ultimate goal was to get players and fans to be excited about being an American Eagle. Very important for the, just not just us, but for the entire athletic program just being a competitive mess that, uh, that he wants to win right away. The team has worked hard all of last season and is really looking forward to learning new skills with their new coach and becoming better players. We have a really good group of guys that really like each other um, and believe in Coach Simpkins, so we're really excited. For ATV News, I'm Lindsay Morin. When we come back, KPU brought speakers on campus to talk about food and security. An AU in Motion recently performed their spring showcase. We'll be back after the break. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. After a semester of hard work, AU in Motion hosted a spring showcase for the AU community. A week before AU in Motion's dance recital, the Cats and Arts Center Rotunda transforms into a stage to prepare for AU in Palooza. Ensembles rehearse musicals, stiletto dance, tap, and more while peers watch and support from the steps. Throughout these practices, the club spends their nights in a foyer of encouragement, hard work, and celebration. They're very fun because it's all like we're all friends, but we gotta remember that it's we have a job to do too, so we have to kind of really pay attention to the choreographer and make sure that we're giving them respect as a dancer and a friend. Cyprian leads the club alongside Molly Collins, 
who says she's excited by AU in Motion's diversity in dance styles this semester. In the past, we've been super like hip hop heavy, but again, like this year, we have ballet and um, we have more tap, which is great, and more heels, and we're seeing some new choreographers, which is great. The dancers went from the Cats and Rotunda to the Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School to perform for the AU community last week. For ATV News, I'm Caleb Ogilvie. Award-winning author of Hood Feminism, Mickey Kendall, came to campus April 6th as a part of AU Students for Change event. The New York Times bestselling book focuses on intersectionality in the feminist movement. Students gathered in Constitution Hall to listen to to Kendall speak about the activism and her career as a writer. She encouraged women to find their voice. You're going wrong, you're being bitchy, right? Because we love to try to socialize, especially young women, into this mythological box of being nice, of being sweet. Don't be a troublemaker, don't be a bitch. We look at women in power sometimes. How many of them are nice? How many of them are sweet? How many of them have you ever heard described as, oh, she's a good girl, she's very fun? Not one, right? American University students heard from experts on feud insecurity during an event put on by the Kennedy Political Union. Francine Warsaw has the story. The Kennedy Political Union's first year fellows presented the Hungry for Hope initiative in MGC on Thursday, April 6th. Global Food Security Program Coordinators Anita Kirschenbaum and Emma Dodd, as well as DC Hunger Solutions Interim Director La Monica Jones, led an hour-long discussion with AU students and staff. They spoke about food insecurity in the district and on campus. It means possible to have a food secure population, and it's the active choices that we're not making, the investments that we're not making, and the conversations that we're not having that is causing food insecurity in this country. La Monica Jones says AU students should be proactive and help aid food insecure students directly. If there is a college hunger office or if there is a food pantry on AU's campus, maybe asking how is it that I can connect with those students that are participating in SNAP? Is there some additional assistance that I can provide? According to a 2021 grocery store report, done by DC Hunger Solutions. Of the 74 full service grocery stores in DC, only two are located in Ward 7 and just one in Ward 8. In Ward 3, where American University is, there are 16. The coordinators added that this disproportionately impacts marginalized communities. Why are those in Ward 8 east of the river struggling compared to those in Ward 3, which is our highest income earning ward in the district? They encouraged AU students to intern with the Global Food Security Organization to fight for food access policy. For ATV News, I'm Francine Warsaw. Amtrak now offers special night owl fares that range from $5 to $10 for trains which stop at most locations from D.C. to New York that depart between 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. It's pretty good actually, but uh, kind of expensive. The one I took was uh, like at midnight, so it was fine, prices were cheap. But uh, if you wanted to go there during the middle of the day or early in the morning, prices will rise. The discounted fare tickets are for coach seats on the Northeast Regional trains and other select routes. If you are interested in traveling outside at evening times, students can still save up to 15% on any ticket via the Amtrak website. The Eagle's Nest, one of AU's convenience stores, was recently relocated to the former Capital One Bank location in the Bender Arena Tunnel. This move makes way for a series of renovations that will take place over the summer, including the campus bookstore being moved to the now vacant retail space. Additionally, AU Dining is accepting submissions for potential new names for Eagle's Nest, as well as the East Campus Convenience Store. More information can be found on AU's dining website at dineoncampus.com au. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, 
Why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Students can find help on campus with getting through finals. Gabby Arnold talked to some students about the academic support resources available. American University students are looking forward to the end of the semester and the start of summer. But before heading home, students need to overcome one more hurdle, finals. Final season is a stressful time for many students on campus, but AU offers student support services. The Academic Support and Access Center, or ASAC, offers a variety of services to students during final exams. The center offers academic coaching services and tutoring services that students can use during finals. They definitely helped me last year. It was like nice being able to have like to go to them and be like, I'm confused on this, and they helped me with that. And also they like also helped me come up with a plan for planning, and it made me feel a lot better about like my work. However, not every student uses these resources. I know that they're there and I should be using them, but I just haven't been. ASAC oversees the Writing Center located in the library, academic coaching on the third floor of MGC, and the Math and Stats Lab located in Don Myers. For students who want to learn more about how AU can help during finals, visit american.edu slash provost slash academic dash access. For ATV News, I'm Gabby Arnold. Some students are planning on how to reduce waste created when they move out of their dorms in the next couple weeks. Project Move Out will collect unwanted clothing, furniture, home goods, and non-perishable food from students. The AU Office of Sustainability, Housing and Residence Life, AU Facilities Management, and Wonk Trade organize the initiative. Donated clothing and food items will go to both Mobile Hope, a DC nonprofit fighting homelessness, and the market at AU, an on-campus food pantry. Furniture and home goods are offered back to residential students during the fall 2023 move-in. Project Move Out is run by student volunteers like Gabriella Horde, an AU sophomore. I actually felt like I could see myself, like see the impact I was making, because everything that people donated, if they hadn't donated it, it would literally end up in the landfill. Um, and it's, it's like insane the amount of stuff people donate because a lot of people will move off campus or like go home and like instead of putting stuff in storage or keeping it for the next year, they'll literally throw it away. Students can donate their unwanted items at five locations on campus. One on the quad, one in front of Cassell Hall, one by Nebraska Hall, one in the East Campus parking lot, and one in the LA Quad. Project Move Out will happen from May 3rd to May 14th. AU celebrates the 20th anniversary of its Arboretum by doing some spring cleaning. Campus Beautification Day, which took place last week, allowed students to volunteer and come together to plant around campus. The 20th anniversary of the Arboretum involved a welcoming and program by AU, President Sylvia Burwell, a dedication to the Arboretum, a community lunch at the amphitheater, and a raffle. Gabby Lee, one of the volunteers, spoke about this year's event plan's going on and it's really valuable to a city, to an urban area like this and it really helps you know, demonstrate our love for our campus here. The Arboretum, which stretches across campus, features over 5,000 trees and 500 different plant species. So be sure to keep an eye out for all of the new blooms this year. The class of 2023 is set to graduate in just a few weeks. On May 12th, students in the School of Communication, School of Education, and School of International Service will have their ceremonies. On May 13th, the Kogod School of Business, School of Professional Studies, School of Public Affairs, and College of Arts and Sciences will have their ceremonies. For more information on specific schedules and to reserve tickets, visit american.edu slash commencement. AU welcomes a set of distinguished speakers to share words of wisdom with the graduating class each year. This year, speakers include Larry Hogan, the 62nd Governor of Maryland, who will speak about the School of Public Affairs. Also, Ted Leonsis, owner of multiple DC sports teams, including the Washington Wizards, will address graduates of the School of Communication and School of Education, and Supreme Court Justice Kintaji Brown Jackson, the first black woman to serve on the nation's highest court, will speak at the Washington College of Law's commencement ceremony. We want to close out this year with a special thank you to our graduating eboard members, Melody Klepfer, our executive producer, and Mira Weinrob, our general manager. ATV will miss you. 
ATV News will be returning in the fall along with a revival of Sports Zone. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at AUATV for everything ATV related. On behalf of everyone here, we want to thank all of our viewers for turning, tuning in this semester. We look forward to seeing you in fall 2023. For now, I'm Stella Gujic. And I'm Julianne Sheehan. Have a fantastic summer.